Welcome back to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me. We have a very timely and exciting show for you today. Uh, we are joined in studio with Miriam Hinein, and she is the co-director and producer of the documentary film Vanishing Bees. She has more than 15 years' experience working as an investigative journalist, a documentary and television producer, and professional researcher. She's done projects with the BBC Discovery Robert Greenwald and Morgan Spurlock. So welcome to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me, Miriam. Hello. Thank you for having us. Sure thing. And also, we have the co-director, producer, and cinematographer, George Langworthy, uh, of the documentary Vanishing Bees. And he has produced, directed, and filmed documentaries on various topics. His award-winning short film, Breezeway, premiered at the Sundance Film Festival and was broadcast on HBO, PBS, the BBC, and Canal+. Plus. So uh, welcome to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me, George. Thanks so much for having us here. Okay. Um, now, please uh, tell us what motivated you to make, uh, to yes, actually spend the last couple of years of your lives making this film. Well, George and I were looking for a topic to work on, and George is the one who um, told me this would be a good documentary, The Bees Are Disappearing. And at first I was like, yeah. You know, I didn't really register, and I had some time to do some research and indeed, I realized that the bees are disappearing all over the world. And what really interested me personally is that I discovered that, that bees are a female society. And if there's a hive, usually there's about 45,000 to 50,000 in a hive. And 200 are male drones, and the rest are sisters. And so they really work for the greater good um, of, you know, for, of their society, of their community. And with colony collapse disorder, one of the symptoms is that they abandon the queen and the brood, which are the babies, and they vanish. There's no dead bees around the hive to, to find, to examine. Um, they just leave. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, the importance of uh, our bees being able to pollinate uh, for our food supply, for our survival. Most people think about bees for honey. Well, what's really, you know, at the core issue of, of why they're so important is their pollination. Uh, bees pollinate a third of our diet. Um, apples, oranges, all your melons, broccoli, even the seed for alfalfa, which is used to feed cattle and chicken is pollinated by bees. So pe bees are, are, are pollinated, you know, a third of the food that we eat every day. They're crucial to our existence, and they bring sweetness into our lives. And a lot of people think that they sting and they make honey. You know, I, I've told people, oh, we're making a documentary, and they're like, oh, yeah, no more honey. Uh, no, that's it's honey is just the, the is kind of the bonus that we get from bees and they work really for they give us it, they give us flowers they give us the beauty they give us food we're joined uh right now with uh David Hackenberg he is uh he and his son run about a 3000 hives of bees in five states for pollination and three of those states for honey as well as pollination he has been keeping bees for over 42 years david served as president of the american beekeeping federation and had served on the national honey board for many years he continues to work with the university and USDA researchers on solving the problems of CCD, colony collapse disorder. He's known as the person who found a problem with the bees in November of 2006. Welcome to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me, Mr. Hackenberg. Glad to be here today. Now, when did you first notice a change, the beginning of this, this problem that we're, we're seeing now? Well, actually, we started seeing some problems develop in 2004, and, and we didn't really know what we were looking at. started seeing some interesting things happening and bees disappearing. And people inside EPA have actually started talking with me actually in early as, as, as February of 2007. Uh, basically, what it is is you've got, you got a chemical that is riding on a, on a nicotinoid base, which is an artificial nicotine. And if you know anything about nicotine, you rub it on your skin, you, you know, you suck on it, you, whatever you do, it's going to go in your bloodstream. And the same way with these chemicals, they use this artificial nicotine, you spray it on the plant, the plant absorbs it because of, of, of the 
the artificial nicotine that's being used to carry the, the carry the, the insecticide. The thing of it is that, that what how they're telling this that these chemicals work against the targeted insects is exactly what what we started seeing inside of beehives, and, and you know they they uh, con- cause the, the insects to be confused. They can't find their way home. Uh, they quit feeding. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of that go on with, with bees that have been around corn, soybeans, cotton. Uh, once they work the bloom, they just stop eating. And the old chemicals, your old organic phosphates and, and the old hard chemicals, you've seen, you've seen the insect that you were targeting dead right there. Uh-huh. Uh, if the honeybees got poisoned by these products, you've seen the honeybees dead at the hive or dead at the field. You know, you don't see the dead insects. All you know is after you put these products out there, um, you come back a week later and, and they've disappeared. The insects have disappeared. Yeah. Well, I, I want to hear um, a comment from George. Uh, go ahead. I just want to elaborate that point on what um, David is talking about. You know, in the old days, the spray on pesticides, you just spray it and you'd see all the dead bees lying around because it killed them. And that still happens. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these pesticides are derived from uh, chemicals used in chemical warfare. Uh, Nerve gas, mustard gas, sarin. It's the same molecule. Put on our food supply. That we're now using and derivatives of that that we're using to to kill, you know, pesticides. Insects, and yes, spraying it kind of broadly and now inducing it into the xylem and phloem of your plants. It's in the leaves, it's in the flowers, it's in the fruits, it's in the nectar. The bees take the nectar, the pollen, and, and yeah. feed d- it d- to their young. Uh, David, just tell us real quick what's happening with the commercial beekeepers. Well, we're, you know, we're losing bees and, you know, and, and it, it gets financially, it, it, it becomes a crisis, you know, and beekeepers are losing a lot of money and, and you can't just keep putting bees back in the boxes and, and, and to survive. So uh, we may, you know, we, I don't think we're going to lose all the bees in, in the world or anything like that, but we're going to lose beekeepers. And if we don't have beekeepers, uh, then we don't have pollination because these are the people that get the job done. Right, and and otherwise, if we don't have the bees, then we end up eating grub. What is it that we have left? Rice and what else? Rice and corn. Okay, um, I'm going to rattle off a few things here, and then I'm going to let our um, uh, filmmaker here tell us uh, what we can do. One is support local beekeepers. Uh, number two is eat organic and, and uh, garden without pesticides. Number three, raise honeybees. Number four, plant wildflowers. Number five, let lawnmakers know you're concerned. And in 30 seconds, what do you have to say, uh, George? I think that the bees have a very important message for all of us. We should really look at our food, look at where it comes from, look at how it's produced. And the other part of their message is that life is a miracle. Mother Nature's grand design is profoundly beautiful, and it works. We don't need to tamper with it. It would be lovely to go back to a way of living where nature presides over economy and not the other way around. These two filmmakers have put their um, pretty much life and pocketbook on the line over the last couple of years, uh, feeling that this is a very important mission, the survival of the bees. I want to thank very much uh, Miriam uh, Hanane and George Langworthy, David Hackenberg, our beekeeper. Together we can create a healthy planet, healthy me. We'll see you next week.